Hey, YouTube, Rumble, morning, good after morning, Sunday, eight oh five in the A of M. Welcome. Caffeine with CJ. So grab your cup of Joe. Let's go. Helps if you hold it in the right direction. Get in the car all spiffied up there yesterday, and I'm taking a little break. I get a text from the youngest human that I'm responsible for, and all it is is a picture of a summons for jewelry duty. His number came up. I just told him, wear your shirt that says time to take Brandon to the train station. They'll let you go. Geauga County, the county that he lives in is, well, let's just say it's on the wrong side of the political spectrum in my opinion. So. Oh, man. Nah, didn't sleep good. Don't don't even ask. I, I'm giving up on sleeping good. I'm going to cherish the two hours I get. And the other 22 hours that I'm awake. It's just what it's going to be. Bad habits. Let's talk about bad habits. I got a. I got my worst. My worst bad habit besides smoking. Don't don't go down that highway. Is this? I'm trying to break myself of of uh, of that. Every time you get a little ding, a little beep, a little. Zzz, you grab the phone, you look. I've been trained that way with my previous occupation. Back in the day, the early days, all we had was pay phones. And you would call dispatch at different times throughout the day to see if there were any loads available or to give them an update on your location. Then they moved into the world of pagers and pay phones. Pager would go off and now you're searching for you're searching for a payphone. And somebody came out with the cellophane phones. And then as time evolved, they added that text feature in expediting 
he would get a first you'd get a text it would be your load offer we have a load picking up eight and a half miles from your current location which was always a lie because they didn't know where our current location was at And then they would give you the load information. It's four pieces. It's 4,000 pounds. It picks up at noon. And it's going to Kansas City. 900 miles. Are you interested? Then you answer yes or no. If you answer yes, then you say, what's the pay? And they come up with some stupid figure like 75 cents a mile. And you say, no. I don't run for just fuel money. They're like, okay, well... We'll, we'll move on to the next one. Next truck. A couple minutes later, you get a text. You're the only truck in the, uh, in the area. What do you want to run this load? So you go back and forth via text message. And then finally, you come to an agreement. And then you get the email with all the load particulars of the customer pick, where you're picking up at and yada, yada, your load number, because you got to have all this stuff to fill out your paperwork when you send it in to get paid. <clears throat> so then you're on your way. You head over to the, over to the, uh, the shipper. Open the doors, you bump the dock, you go in, tell them what you're there for, you give them your load number. And they say, okay, we'll get you loaded in five minutes. Well, now they got, but the load has grown. Imagine that. Now it's six pieces and it's 5,000 pounds. So you say, hold on. So you go back to the text message. Say, yep, they added two more pieces and another thousand pounds. It's going to take this much more to get those two extra pieces on my truck. And you start the process all over again. Finally come up. To, now you're on your way. Every two hours, you got to check in. So dispatch knows where you're at. Because I never would run to Qualcomm where they could track me. Why would I pay for them? But why would I pay for that? So they have peace of mind of knowing where I'm at when all they got to do is call. So every two hours, you got to check in, tell them where you're at. And that goes through the whole process until you get to the Kazane delivery point. Get empty. Then you start the process all over again. Empty in Kansas City. It was signed by Ralph at 2 a.m. And then they say, stand by. Because now they, they won't release you yet. And yet. They got to release the truck in their system before you can leave. I always left. I remember we had this one, this one dispatcher, young girl. She was funny. She was kind of not right bright but there was two there was two of us my truck and another truck we were running a, a dedicated run 
out of Wellington, Ohio, which is um, an hour and a half to the west of here. One night you would go up to Tonawanda, New York, and the other truck would go up to Saginaw, Michigan with three stops. I, Tonawanda was one stop, but you had to wait. You unloaded, you waited four hours, and they put the stuff back on your truck when they were done with it, and you brought it back. The stuff that went to, up to Saginaw, you didn't wait. You just, you just dropped and ran. See? People waking up. Oh. Anyways. Now, see, normally I would pick that up and answer it, but I'm not doing that. It, I am. No. But anyways, we would make up towns when we checked, when we did our two-hour check-in that didn't exist. And she would go crazy because she can't find them in her computer. And it never failed. Wellington to Tonawanda, New York was a three and a half hour drive. And I would get up there, well, we both would get up there early. Because they didn't, uh, the, their shift didn't start till 4 a.m. And we'd, I'd get up there about 2.30 in the morning. And it would never fail. You'd be sitting there waiting for them to open every other night. I'm waiting there. And she would call, need your current location. And I'm like, I'm sitting in the dock. Are you empty? No, they don't open till four. Every time. So then they come in, they unload you, you send the text, empty in Tanawanda, standing by. Two hours would go by, you're trying to get some sleep, she calls, need your current location. I go, in bed. Quit calling. That was a good, those were, that was a good one. Man, how long did we do that? We did that for two and a half years until uh, they finally got everything caught up. And then they started shipping it by uh, LTL freight. parts for Chrysler Corp. The expediting industry served the auto industry mostly. So anyways gonna be kind of a chill day here. I'm just gonna I don't know what I'm going to do. I have, I just got up. <laughs> I took my two hours sleep from um, four to six today. So anyways, hey, I hope you're well. Hope you're safe. Every day's a school day. If you're not learning, you're being left behind. Go be kind. Make somebody smile today. Thanks for the, uh, to sit down, have them coffee, tea, 
whatever you're drinking at whatever time it is in your part of the world. I know smoking Saeed, he's in the late afternoon already. Okay. I have to get that one. Ah. I'll see y'all sometime soon. If something exciting happens, I'll be back. Oh, hold on. Yesterday's mail. Now, as y'all know, I'm done with physical therapy. They signed off and everything, and yada, yada, yada. And in typical health insurance fashion, they no negotiated the price that they pay. And guess who gets to make up the difference? This broken hip is going to bankrupt me. Got, got a $14,000 bill for the hospital stay. For that kind of money, you think it could have been a little bit more luxurious. You know what I'm saying? Seven days of misery. The surgeon negotiated a rate. I owe him two more grand. So now we're up to 16. Now, the home health care facility negotiated a rate. I, I owe them another two grand. I am now $18,000 in the hole. Their $10 a month payments just got sliced in half. Now they're getting $5. I'm coming. I only get so much money to go around. And I am not gonna make gonna spread myself thin because the day I die is the day the payments stop okay now I'm out of here see ya soon peace okay yeah, I could have been talking and yeah. Bye.